Welcome to a very, very interesting show. This is the India Mobile Congress IMC. This is the de facto standard now in terms of a technology event in India. But this time, the story is completely different. From the demos inside, the kind of startups we have, the kind of devices, I'm going to show you all of it. But even more interesting than that, 5G is the big deal. Plus, I'm going to show you a whole lot more on the show. Then we go back to studio because I have a very interesting other thing to show you. So like I said, a very interesting show all through, including, of course, the announcements being made out here are getting louder and louder. So I have to get even more loud. And loudly I can proclaim, if you miss this show, you're in trouble. So wait, watch, let's get started. From new launches to 5G demos, Rajiv Makhni brings you all the big headlines from the India Mobile Congress in Delhi, where 5G was in the focus yet again. We show you two budget launches from an Indian company, Play, which promise great feature sets at very aggressive prices. In a very special segment, we show you what happens when technology and music come together to weave magic. So here's the incredible part. So much happening at the Indian Mobile Congress, which I will take you through. But right now, lots of other news also coming in. Let's take a look at what made serious headlines from the world of gadgets. This week's headlines were dominated by Google as a tech giant announced its new products at the annual Made by Google event in New York. The new phones Pixel 4 and 4XL caught everyone's attention since they won't be coming to India anytime soon. The reason being speculated is that the Pixel 4 features a radar sensor dubbed Project Soli during development and now called Motion Sense. This works on 60 GHz spectrum and won't be coming to India due to spectrum licensing issues. But what caught our eye was the Pixel Book, Google's new redesigned Chromebook priced at $649, which is roughly 46,300 rupees. It comes with a slim metal body, a large touchpad, and a massive 13.3 inch screen. It weighs around 2.4 pounds. It comes with a new keyboard with more comfortable keys and looks like a great laptop at first glance. There is fast charging through USB C, which can juice up the device for 2 hours in 20 minutes. And that's not all, Google also gave us a glimpse of its new true wireless earbuds that may compete with the Apple AirPods, the Pixel Buds 2. These are priced at $179, which is around 12,800 rupees. They come with a noise isolating design and have silicon ear tips. You can access Google Assistant hands free. The buds also come with sensors which can pick up ambient noise and adjust speaker volume and microphone range. So, lots happening out here at the India Mobile Congress, but. Before we move further into that, I have to show you something very interesting. I've been using this one now for a week. This is called the Playfit SW75 and believe me, this is a shocker. Let me start first with the price. This smartwatch, built beautifully, fantastic build quality, absolutely solid. You'll see it in my review. Is priced at 2,999 rupees. Now that of course is a shocker, then you'll be like, okay, it must not be having too many features. How about the fact it has 15 day battery life, 50 days standby. It can track almost any sporting activity function that you want. It's also almost waterproof. You can do many, many things with this, including sleep tracking, including a whole lot more, including notifications from your phone. In fact, I've been actually going through that entire list and I haven't found anything in this that almost all the expensive ones can do that this one cannot so let's take a deep look into this incredible smartwatch priced at 2999 rupees when i come back one more device from the same company there's a new smartwatch making a splash in a very saturated market, the smartwatch space. Let's show you the many features of the SW75, a new wearable from Play, an Indian company. This is priced aggressively at Rs. 2,999. When it comes to looks, it has a sturdy build and no, there is no cheap plastic here. The watch has a stainless steel casing with metallic buttons on the sides and sports a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 3. On first glance, it looks premium and might we say it is reminiscent of the Apple Watch. There is a silicone strap which is comfortable to wear and it is the material of choice at this price. We tried out the LCD display both indoors and outdoors and we found that it had good visibility. And if the screen is off, the watch looks almost bezel-less, which is saying something at this price point. The touch-sensitive screen could have been better though. The watch pairs with the PlayFit app, which can be used to customize and control the same. The app is a bit sluggish and could use some improvements. 
When it comes to feature, let's talk about one that particularly is noteworthy and caught our eye. The SW75 is water resistant up to 50 meters, so yes, you can swim with it. And it also acts as a competent fitness tracker and provides stats like steps walked, calories burnt, heart rate and more. You get around 14 workout modes including running, cycling and yoga. There is a heart rate monitor too which performs well. You can also use the watch to track your sleep. There is a female healthcare mode too which gets a big thumbs up from us. The interface is slightly slow and you get only four different watch faces. You cannot download watch faces from a third party which is a bit of a bummer but then again at just 3000 rupees this watch does the job. You get notifications, alarm alerts, music controls and other frills too. We were quite impressed with the feature set at this price point. The star of this show is the battery life. On a single charge, we got around 15 days of battery life with heart rate monitoring disabled. This is pretty impressive. It is powered by an advanced chipset from the Nordic family, we are told, which lends this smartwatch a standby battery of more than 47 days in its 210 mAh form factor. The PlayFit SW75 makes for a solid choice as a budget smartwatch with some stellar features. If you're looking for a good budget option to add to your festive shopping list, look no further. So I showed you this, this smartwatch from Playfit called the SW75, 2,999 rupees, absolute steal in every which way. But here's another very interesting device from the same company. This is a neck band that actually is a headphone and again works really well. Take a look. Another product from Play which could make for a great gift this festive season is this, the N23 wireless neckband earphones launched by Play Go. And these are a pretty affordable option at Rs 1,399. These are easy to use Bluetooth earphones and pair quickly and seamlessly with our smartphone. They go around your neck and are pretty comfortable to wear. We also like the fact that the earbuds bond together magnetically when the N23 is not in use, so you won't misplace these in a busy commute. These weigh only around 28 grams and would be great for students who have long commutes since they're pretty light in weight and even light on the pocket. These babies have a Bluetooth range of around 10 meters and the Air Roha chipset ensures that the neckband pairs and reconnects with the device seamlessly within that range. We also like the fact that at only 1400 rupees, this neckband comes with integrated voice APK for Siri, Google Assistant and Alexa, ensuring easy and fast pairing with the host device. While the neckband sports a tiny form factor, the audio quality is decent. And the secret sauce here is that each earphone has dual 6mm drivers. So if you're in the metro or waiting for your car on a busy street, the sound quality won't disappoint. Well, at least at this price point. The budget segment isn't compromising on battery and the N23 offers around 20 hours of playtime which is commendable at this price point. It comes with a dual battery design making the device churn quite a few hours of play and talk time on a single charge. So if you have a younger sibling who is looking for an affordable pair of earphones, save him or her a pretty penny and give them this neckband. Here at the India Mobile Congress, there's more than just mobiles. I'm going to show you a TV that isn't even called a TV. It's actually called a smart display. This is the Honor smart display. What is different? Why isn't it a TV? What are the features? It's absolutely brilliant looking, the kind of resolution, the kind of, I mean, almost zero bezel, super thin, but it's got so much more within that is a complete and absolute shocker. Will be with us very, very soon, hopefully somewhere in the first quarter or the first few months of 2020, this smart display TV will be out. Let's take a quick look at the TV. We speak to the people behind it. A camera popping up? Well, this is no phone with another pop-up camera. This is Honor's new Vision Smart TV that was unveiled at India Mobile Congress. The 55-inch variant was showcased which comes with a premium 4K UHD resolution and 400 nits of brightness. There are six 10-watt speakers and of course, this is a smart TV. But here is where this gets a whole new meaning. Honor proposes that this TV can control many aspects of a smart home, including lights and air conditioners. The AI pop-up camera is there for instant video calls and there is Honor Magic Link feature which is seen in the remote for seamless sharing of content from the phone to the TV. The Honor Vision Smart TV will only be launched officially next year in India. So actually, we don't call it TV, we call it a smart screen. Uh, Honor Vision is much more than just a TV. Uh, powered by Huawei ShopTech technology. Uh, equipped with the three Huawei self-developed uh, chipset, the Hongfu 818 display chipset, on air camera, MPU chipset, and the flagship level uh, Wi-Fi chipset. 
Honor was not alone with a smart screen. Detail launched its ultra-large 75-inch smart TV as well. This packs in 4K UHD and a price tag of 1,29,999 rupees. The audio output is a total of 20 watts and it comes with all the bells and whistles of an Android TV. This one runs on Android 6 and has a 2 GB RAM. 5G, now every single time you hear those two syllables put together, it just sounds like fantasy, right? I mean, yes, one day it'll happen, but here, at the Ericsson booth at India Mobile Congress, it's happening, it's here. They actually have a demo out here. They've got a whole 5G network. They did connected music. They're doing video conference calls out here. In fact, I've got a phone that is a 5G phone connected to a 5G network. When I see it out there, I'm actually feeling really good. This is a feel good in every which way. Ericsson is at the forefront of all the 5G flurry at India Mobile Congress this year. Right from 5G equipment to data speeds and even enterprise 5G demos. It was all showcased here. This is a 5G equipped ambulance demo that can help a patient while he or she is on the way to the hospital. How this works is, a paramedic is guided by a doctor in real time using 5G speeds with this haptic glove. Using this, the doctor can guide the paramedic while seeing live results from the hospital itself. Ericsson also got its groove on through 5G connected music. The band was split into two. The singer Siddharth Mahadevan and two of his band members were right here, while two of the other members were at a separate location. But the music was synchronized through 5G and brought together as one piece without a microsecond of delay. 5G was going to be rolled out in the world, and we were also showing use cases here in, uh, in India, right? Using our pre commercial technology at that time. We were showing connected car, we were showing a connected drone uh, for a kind of critical uh, situations. Now it's only one year, 360 days. We have launched 5G commercially across four continents, right. America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and we were first in those four continents to launch 5G, which means we cannot be second again now. We will stay first. <laughs> and uh, so a lot has happened. By the end of 2019, we will already have around 10 million sub, uh, kind of okay. using, using 5G, so it's going, uh, picking up very, very fast, faster than expected. There are already more than 10 devices which are 5G capable. Huawei has been at the center of all controversy lately with the US having banned it. But in India at IMC, the company showcased its 5G demos with full steam ahead of the 5G trials. Huawei is known to have cost-effective 5G solutions, so many network providers are keen on its technology. The company showcased a dual-band, massive multiple input, multiple output antenna. It also had on display spectrum sharing between 4G and 5G, basically two technologies on the same spectrum to reduce 5G costs. Other 5G use cases showcased was a detailed smart city model. All eyes were on Huawei showcasing its 5G tech this year, ahead of the impending field trials. I introduced this at the India Mobile Congress. I'm here back again because I have the very people that I want to hear from, conning Gorilla Glass. So Akshay, welcome back to the country. You keep threatening us that you will spend a Diwali with us. You never do. You just come in before Diwali and leave. Uh, but hopefully, maybe next year, right? Uh, but welcome back to the country and tell us about what's happening with conning Gorilla Glass, what's new, what's different, what are we expecting? Well, it's good to see you again a year later. Thanks. I believe the last time we were together was at the Imagine Dragons concert. Absolutely. And uh, so happy Diwali again, I guess. Same time period, isn't it? <laughs> um, the, you know, when we finished the Dragons, we, that was the, f the, the interaction between Corning, Gorilla Glass Music, the mobile devices. We were trying to bring that whole intersection of the world, the universal language of music. And as we've entered 2020, uh, 2019, sorry, jumping a year ahead, <laughs> um, we are planning, we've been working towards that again this year. And one of the interesting facts that, that we just learned, which is really fascinating, is that in India, India actually has the highest consumption of music per, per week at about 19 hours. Of that, 97% is all used on a mobile device. Wow. So, you know, put that story together, we are really trying to focus on bringing that, those two worlds together, and we're driving a campaign forward this year in, in India, r actually right now. Dushar, welcome back. Uh, last I met you again was at the Imagine Dragon concert where yes. you turned into a superstar and Corning made you into one. How has life changed for you? No, you're, you're being very kind. 
I mean, yeah, uh, we, we are constantly, uh, you know, working towards uplifting Indian classical instruments. Mm -hmm. We are constantly trying to tell people that, you know, Indian classical instruments are very versatile. There's this sort of exceptional versatility to Indian classical instruments because they're very malleable, you know, they can be molded into anything. And right. I'm just out there with my music telling people that, you know, if a sitar is capable of uh, playing something like a ragyaman, it's also capable of playing Believer by Imagine Dragons. Mm -hmm. What's Corny Gorilla Glass? Technology and Corny Gorilla Glass, I get it. You guys are the absolute supreme leaders in, you know, putting these two together. What is playing for change? What's music got to do with Corny Gorilla Glass? Take us through. All right, let me tell you a little bit first about Playing for Change. Yeah. Um, playing for Change is an organization that was started by a gentleman named, by the name of Mark Johnson. Okay. Mark has probably made music with some of the top musicians in the world. And he one day realized that he wanted to take the music out to the world as opposed to creating it in the studio. Um, How is it connected to technology? Uh, How is it connected to Corning Gorilla Glass is more my question. So good point. Um, they're both interconnected. Um, one of the points that if you look at what, so let's start with his alt, the concept of innovation. Um, he started off using YouTube as a platform. And YouTube, as you very well know, is a mobile device platform. Yeah. You're accessing music through YouTube. And if you can imagine that a device that you're touching to connect to this music, you're most likely touching Gorilla Glass. Mm -hmm. So that innovation, the concept of using YouTube early, the concept of using uh, mobile technology to create the music, because in the old days when he went out, he went out with big batteries and this mobile platform that mm -hmm. he had to carry all his mixing gear. Right. Today, um, it's basically a laptop. And a lot of the video that we shot was shot on a Samsung Galaxy S10. Yeah, aren't we Indians just absolutely <laughs> amazing? I mean, look <laughs> at the kind of things we do that actually does, you know, propel so many amazing things forward. And Tushar, obviously, you're here with us right now, so obviously involved in this project. What are you doing? Yes, I'm just uh, trying to showcase the Indian side of it. So uh, we did a video with the Playing for Change. Okay. And uh, we, uh, I was responsible for putting out the Indian bits in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, like that constantly shows, you know, how, I don't know, moldable Indian classical instruments are. And we were working with that. And uh, apart from that, you know, we are also kind of uh, uplifting a subculture which is kind of dying in India. But I have two more quick questions for you, Akshay. So the first one is, Tushar being here, you being here, India, obviously India plays a very big part in this, right? I mean, this yeah. entire thing then obviously means that it's very India-centric at this moment for you. Take us through some of the other things that are, make it very India-centric. So one, we've got the PFC actual video. We're launching an Indian version of the video that Tashar has made. He'll tell you a little bit about it. Okay. It's, it's yeah. beautifully done, and the two videos sit together in a very harmonious way. So our goal was not only to have Tushar integrated in the world video as well as this. In fact, it, the roots of it, you know, as we're exploring this video in India, as we're setting out the main video, we also want to back it up with an Indian version with Tushar and the work that he's doing. And this continuous engagement of the India Jam project from Imagine Dragons okay. to this, um, you know, we think that this is a track that we want to continue on. Uh, does this continue? Are you going to take this forward? Can we expect more things? Well, our intention right now at the moment is to really s get India to see these videos, really get the content out there, support Playing for Change and the India Jam project, mm -hmm. get the word out, um, and really share this video because it's a really powerful video. The song we chose was Love okay. from the Imagine Dragons, oh, right, and I think right. we need a lot more Absolutely, of that in the world at this yes. moment. I would be completely and totally amiss if I did not then show you the exact thing that we're talking about out here, that actual PFC, the India Jam part of it. Let's take a look. We don't have to kill one another, kill one another. 